Hey guys, I'm Mike Starwalker. I make fight videos and tutorials, and today I'm going to show you how to take your first steps to building your own lightsaber. So today I'm going to show you how to solder and some basic wiring techniques. I have my soldering iron, Spark Fun, ESD Safe, which I'm going to recommend you get an ESD Safe soldering iron. I have my solder. This is a special kind of steel wool to help keep your iron clean and I'm going to show you how to do that in the video. I have my wire strippers and wire cutter all in one. My Spark Fun wire. Heat shrink and helping hands. So these are all the tools you're going to need. And this is what I'm going to show you how to solder today to wire to a switch, LED battery tab and how to tree wires. If you can do all these things, you should be able to build a stunt saber no problem. This is a special kind of steel wool. I'm gonna have the link in the description. You're gonna need this to help clean your soldering iron between almost every solder if you can. Just wipe it off. It'll help keep your iron clean during the process. To clean your iron, you will heat up the iron, put some solder on it, probably about this much. It, it doesn't really matter. Just a good amount though, so it's covering the full tip. And then you're going to wipe it off with this steel wool. And it's gonna be really important to keep your solder clean the entire time because if your soldering iron is dirty, then your joints are gonna be dirty and your joints are gonna break. So this is the key to everything. You have to keep a very clean soldering iron tip. So to solder your resistor to a wire, which is gonna be necessary in the stunt builds, first you wanna cut it to about here. You just don't want it to be too long because these metal things can break, wires can bend. But if these bend too much, they'll break off. So you wanna keep these to a minimum length. You're gonna to wanna to strip your wire to about the same length. It's a little longer or shorter, that's okay. So that's ideally what you would want about like that. Next thing to do, we're going to pre-tin the resistor. What we're doing is heating up the iron, put a little solder on the iron, and we put this iron with solder on it to the resistor, and then we add a little bit of solder on this side to make sure that's fully pre-tinned. And we do the same thing with the wire. And you don't want to have stuff under while you're soldering. So we pretend the iron. We put the iron to the wire and we use a little bit of solder. You don't want too many globs. If you can help it. And then that is pre-tinned. So now what we're going to do is hold this wire to this resistor. So now I have my helping hands and my resistor and my wire. And you want to have as little movement as possible. This is probably the most solid way to set this up. If you can get everything set up like this, you're gonna be in good shape. So we're gonna pre tin the soldering iron and put a little solder on this side and solder that in. And there you go. This is an example of a not so good joint. It's not particularly shiny because I had some movement going on when I was soldering it together. So if you can, you should avoid this. Now this is an example of what you're aiming for. It is much shinier, and I know that's gonna be a much more solid joint than the previous one I showed you. Next, you would normally get a heat shrink. You would cut it, and then you would put it down the wire and cover the joint. Because you never want the joints to be exposed. You wanna always keep those closed off. And then you would heat it up 
with a lighter. Hair dryers work too. I'd actually recommend hair dryers over this. And you're just gonna go like this very carefully with a lighter. Hair dryer would be much easier for safety. And so you don't burn the wires. And you would just go like this till the heat shrink has shrunken enough to stay on the wire without sliding down. Sometimes this will happen where it slides down a little bit while you're doing it. You can just grab some tweezers and just kind of push up right after you apply the heat to that heat shrink. Just to make sure it covers the full joint there. Soldering to a switch is very similar. So you want to make sure your iron is hot. Get some solder on your iron. You're gonna pre-tin the switch tab by first heating it up with the iron and the solder and then carefully adding the solder to it. And then you have a pre-tin switch tab. And then to solder to the switch tab, Again, if you have two sets of helping hands, that's gonna be ideal. First, you're going to pre-tin your wire, like always. So just as a general rule, you always wanna pre-tin your wire and pre-tin what you're soldering your wire to. You always wanna make sure between solders that you make sure your iron is nice and clean. Because if your iron is clean, you'll make clean joints and the joints will last longer. Then I'm gonna set that up with my helping hands. It seems pretty good. I'm going to apply a little solder to the iron. And that time the wire came back a little bit. So I'm going to do it again and hold the wire there. There you go, that seems to be a good joint. You pull on it and it doesn't break, it's generally a good joint. You can see this is pretty shiny, that's what you're gonna go for. And same thing with the resistor, you're gonna want to chop a little piece of heat shrink and slide it over the wire to cover your switch tab. So soldering to a battery holder. This one's already pre-tinned, but I'm just gonna show you again how to do it. So you would heat this up and then put in a little more solder. And then you got a pre-tinned battery tab. Again, you're always gonna need to strip your wire. And pre-tin it. Again, I'll show you how to do that. So. Once your iron's hot, you're gonna get solder on the iron. Hold the wire between the solder and the soldered iron. And there you go, you got a pre-tinned wire. So then to solder a wire to it, all you have to do is apply the solder. And you'll feel the wire sink down through the solder and touch the tab. And that's what you wanna go for. And if you can see in this one, I burnt a little bit of the wire going on there. You wanna to try to avoid that if you can, but it's okay if that happens because I still have no exposed wire. I actually know there's some people that have techniques that they don't even strip the wire. They just burn the jacketed wire directly on the pad and it burns just enough to solder the wire to the pad. You should not solder to the LED without it already being on the heatsink. I'm just doing this because I don't have a heatsink right now. I'm using an old LED that I upgraded from a Sabre so I can do that. But when you buy your LED and heatsink, you should have the LED already on the heatsink because 
you don't want it to get too hot. You want the LED to get cooled by that heat sink. First, we're gonna pre-tin the LED by putting a little solder on the iron, holding it to the pad, getting the pad hot, then adding a little more solder to it. And you wanna wait about this long, and then you'll know your pad is pre-tinned. And that's what your pad is gonna look like once you pre tinned it properly. And then we're going to pre tin our wire. First, you're gonna to wanna to strip your wire and have it just be about this much, the least amount possible. You wanna make sure the exposed wire isn't gonna be over the pad. That's enough to get the current going. Less to heat up, the quicker it will solder. And then we're going to pre tin our wire. this and that gets it nice and pre-tinned that's just how I do it I know there's other ways you can just glob the iron with solder but this is how I do it once you have your wire pre-tinned and your pad pre-tinned get some solder on your iron you want to get a good amount because this is a bigger pad you're gonna have to use less depending on how big your pad is and then you push down gently You'll feel it kind of sink down once everything gets hot. And then you pull away your iron, and there you have a, your wire soldered to the pad. And you can check by gently pulling your joint like this. For whatever reason, if you would want to take your wire off a pad, heat up your soldering iron. I wouldn't recommend it. If you got your wire on there, I would keep it because it's not good to keep heating up these components over and over again. But if you want to remove it, heat up the pad, wait till it gets hot. You'll feel it come loose and then you can just pull it right off. Another important thing to know how to do is treeing wires. In all the stunts I build, I always need to tree three wires. And this will help you in a lot of builds too. So I find this is the easiest way to do it. I will strip these. Pretty good amount. I'd say that's maybe about half an inch. Hold them together like this. I'll just go ahead and twist them like this. Hold them with my helping hands. And I'll just go ahead and solder them, heat up the iron, pre-tin it. Then we pre-tin these wires that are twisted together. And that's been ready to go to be soldered to something else. And if you have little tabs sticking out, like I did just now, you can always just uh, clip them off like this. So that'll be easier to solder to. And also you'd wanna do that because the heat shrink might not fit over it if too many things are sticking out. So that's another useful thing to know how to do. So that's all you're gonna to need to know to follow along with my video next week where I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I build my stunt savers. A special thanks to Daishan for these sweet jams. I'm gonna put a link to his SoundCloud in the description below. Hope you guys found that video helpful and make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and may the force be with you.